Hey guys, Mish here, and welcome to my new house. I'm still looking for the best lit place in here to shoot, because the glare in my glasses is serious business. Maybe I should clean them. Tried opening the window back there a little bit more. Anyways, today I wanted to talk about sugar, because just about everywhere I turn, I see someone demonizing sugar for some reason or another. Now I'm not going to say that you should all just be loading up on sugar and just go run and just eat as much sugar as you possibly can to be healthy and lose weight. But I don't think that sugar is actually anywhere near as bad as most people make it out to be. And specifically, I wanted to talk about the well-known phenomenon where people say that eating sugar makes them, or their kids, hyper. So it's this really, really common thing I hear, at least here in the US, where parents will say, oh my god, my kid's running around like a maniac, I shouldn't have given him so much sugar or oh no, we can't have any candy or else he'll be totally crazy for the rest of the day. And it's just really common that people seem to think that if you eat sugar, it's gonna make you hyperactive, not be able to pay attention, not have as good of cognition, like memory and executive function stuff. So people seem to think that eating sugar is literally going to ruin your day, especially if you are a child. And I used to think this was true too, because it's such a, a common fact where your parents tell you that if you eat sugar, you're gonna be crazy. But in academic circles, the whole sugar makes you crazy idea is actually something that a lot of people cite as something that has been completely disproven in science that the public still thinks is true. So I don't know where this myth even started, but what I want to focus on are studies that have looked at a bunch of other studies on whether or not sugar actually makes kids crazy. So one of these studies I found was a meta-analysis and the other was a review where they just talk about a bunch of studies and just more qualitatively look at all the results one from 1995 and one from 1996. And just as a reminder, a meta-analysis is a study where researchers take the results from a bunch of other studies and use some fancy stats on them to sort of get at the real effect. So you might have 10 studies that find an effect and five studies that don't find an effect. And then a meta-analysis will go and take the numbers of participants, so weight them by how many people were in each study and take the effect sizes and how noisy they were. And they use all that information to decide whether or not this effect seems to be real. And the results of both of these studies from over 20 years ago show that when looking at over 20 other studies, so pretty much all the studies that had been done to that point on whether or not sugar makes kids crazy experimentally found that there was no effect. So these studies would give children sugar and then measure their behavior have their parents measure it or have researchers measure it, and there was no difference. So sugar did not seem to make kids crazy, did not impact their attention. And this held for kids with ADHD. So part of the myth of sugar making kids crazy has been that it's especially bad for kids with ADHD. But in fact, there appeared to be no effect in kids with ADHD or kids without ADHD. A really interesting thing that was mentioned in one of these studies was that even though objective researchers who were blind to the hypotheses and the conditions, so researchers who didn't know which kids actually were given sugar or a fake substitute, were the ones to do the ratings that found that there was no difference. But when the parents were asked to rate their kids' behavior when they thought the kids were given sugar, the parents rated the kids as being crazier. So low attention span, running around, being hyperactive, more energetic, that kind of thing. And the hilarious part is that the parents rated their kids as worse on all these things and are much harder on their kids, according to these researchers, when they thought the kids were given sugar, even if the kids were actually given fake sugar. So something that could not be causing these effects. So I think this is a really, really poignant example of confirmation bias. And for those of you who believe in the law of attraction, this is a perfect example of how in day-to-day -day life the ideas of the law of attraction can come out in a more scientific way where people have confirmation bias. So if you expect that your kid is gonna be crazy, you might tell your kid, oh, don't eat that sugar or else you'll be acting crazy. And then either the parent A starts looking out for signs of their kids acting crazy and then starts noticing them more, or B convinces the kid in a sort of a placebo effect that eating the sugar is gonna make them hyperactive and then the kids follow suit and fulfill the parent's expectations by being more hyperactive. It seems more likely that it's really just the parents just not perceiving things correctly. So maybe they're paying more attention at that point and they don't notice when their kids running around at other times. Another theory that's been put forward a lot is that when kids have a lot of sugar, they're often in places where they're likely to be hyperactive. And one example that's mentioned a lot is at a birthday party. So when you take your kid to a birthday party, there's a lot of fun stuff, they're with their friends, they're probably gonna be running around and having fun and not paying attention to their parents trying to 
tell them what to do or whatever. And so because there's cake and candy and soda and whatever other sugar laden things at birthday parties, parents blame the kid's behavior on the sugar, but not on the fact that they're running around with their friends. So that's one possible reason why this myth has been perpetuated. I thought these studies were a really interesting way to sort of kick off a series on sugar myths because there are these myths that have no support from science that have become so ingrained in the public psyche and like in common knowledge. So even though the science has shown that sugar does not impact kids' behavior or people's behavior really, for over 20 years, that information still has not made its way into the public consciousness, if you will. And so I just think this is a really important example of why academia and the rest of the world needs to have more contact because a lot of these studies are behind paywalls, so they're in really expensive journals that you can only access if you have university affiliation. And even though anyone can see the abstracts of the studies, sometimes you can't really interpret the results well just based on the abstracts. So that's just a little spiel on why there needs to be better science reporting and why people who are supposed to be responsible for spreading information need to do so from a science-backed perspective rather than just their opinions or anecdotes. Ranting aside, I hope this can be useful for those of you who are afraid to give your children sugar, or afraid to eat sugar because it might make you hyper, or for those of you who might be blaming your childhood hyperactivity on sugar, maybe it's just because you were having fun. It's okay for kids to run around and be nuts, that's what they're supposed to do. Of course I'm not a parent, so you can say I don't understand, but I do have some crazy dogs here, so I sort of understand some crazy children running around like nuts and barking and stuff and not listening. Um, Anyways, I hope this was at least mildly interesting to you, and stay tuned for some more sugar myth-related videos, like how sugar affects your cognition, like in adults and long-term, and maybe some more on sugar overfeeding. We'll see where it goes, but thanks so much for watching, and please like, share, or subscribe if you want to see more videos and support me. Also, if you'd like to really help me out, I have a Patreon account where you can just go pledge one or two dollars for per month or every time I make a video. And that would help me out a lot because moving expenses are serious business and grad school does not pay well at all. So anyways, thanks so much for watching and see you next time.